Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are looking into how much RAM you need to play the latest and greatest gaming titles released in 2018. Now it is about this time each year that I set out on a memory capacity quest and last year's expedition led me to conclude that for gamers, 4 gigabytes is out, 8 gigabytes is the bare minimum and 16 gigabytes is the sweet spot while 32 gigabytes is overkill. That being the case for the 2018 version I will be dropping the 4 gigabyte configuration goes without saying while well, we're getting rid of that one now and we will be focusing on 8, 16 and 32 gigabyte capacities. But before we get too far into this memory capacity comparison, today's video sponsor is Team Group and their incredibly awesome award-winning T-Force Nighthawk RGB DDR4 memory. Originally available in either black or white, they now offer the Legend series featuring a striking gold heat spreader complete with the same trademark RGB lighting. They're available in 16 and 32 gigabyte kits supporting a range of frequencies and timings, so please check the link in the video description for more information. Now, if you're after a short and to the point answer, this video won't be for you. We generally don't tell our viewers what's what and just expect them to take our word for it. Uh, we try and provide as many facts and figures as we can, making it more of a learning experience opposed to just, hey, do this or use this. Also, as the title suggests, the emphasis is on gaming. Uh, for applications, well, it really depends on the application. There are a lot of applications, and even then what you're doing with said application. Uh, Premiere Pro, for example, using 4K footage, that likes lots of RAM, uh, I think 64 gigabytes plus. So it's best to try and research the requirements for the particular application you intend on using. When it comes to games, testing the impact of memory or RAM capacity is no easy task, and there are many factors at play here. As I did last year, before we get into the results, I'd just like to quickly discuss a few of the challenges faced when testing system memory capacity. So challenge number one is picking the right hardware. The graphics card you use can influence how much memory you'll need for smooth gameplay, and in worst case scenarios, the speed of your storage can also impact performance. For example, last year I found the GTX 1060 3GB would often result in higher system memory usage when compared to the 6GB model, and this is because at times you'll run out of VRAM, forcing the operating system to tap into system memory. Then if you run out of system memory, some game assets are moved to local storage, and at this point the performance hit will be so significant that the game will almost certainly become unplayable. So basically what this means is testing with an RTX 2080 Ti, for example, and it's 11 gigabyte VRAM buffer, along with a super snappy NVMe SSD, probably isn't the best way to determine how much system memory your average gamer requires. I'd also assume that if you have a $1,000 plus graphics card, buying 16 gigabytes of RAM or more really isn't an issue. There's still more factors to consider as well. The quality settings used can really have an impact. For example, if you have a GTX 1060 3GB graphics card and you're happy turning things down like textures to a medium type quality setting, then that will reduce how much data is offloaded to the system memory. Taking all this into account, I've tested a number of different hardware configurations and I'll be showing the impact this has on performance in a moment. Uh, during my testing last year, I discovered another issue when trying to show the difference between the various uh, memory capacities. So typically our benchmark passes run for 60 seconds and then that run is done multiple times. Usually we report an average of three runs and this means the system has a chance to cache the pass. So while the results from the first run might see a shockingly low 0.1% or 1% low frame time figure, this can be improved quite dramatically on the second run and then again on the third. So giving you guys a three run average can be quite misleading when talking about the impact various memory capacities have. On performance. The best solution I came up with at the time, and I haven't found a better solution yet a year later, was to run each benchmark pass once, then reset the entire system, load up the game, and then run the next pass. And then I would do that three times, and then I would take the average result there. So I would have an average of three runs, but it would be an average of all the first passes. The benchmark pass is actually 90 seconds in total, but I'm only reporting performance for the last 60 seconds as the performance here more accurately reflects what you'd see when gaming as you're not always loading into a game. Uh, for the initial five to 10 seconds, at least the game uh, can still be loading in assets and this will cause some issues with frame drops and things like that. And this is even uh, present on computers with sufficient system memory. Typically the solution to this caching problem is to just run the benchmark pass once, usually throw away that result or at least average it against two or three more runs and then you get a more uh, reasonable result there, something that's more true to what the system can do. 
And this is what we do when testing CPUs and GPUs. But as I said, this method isn't particularly useful when measuring the impacts of memory capacity. Finally, benchmarks aside, a good indicator for working out how much memory you'll need to play the latest games is just to monitor memory allocation. But of course, to do this, you will need more memory than the game actually requires. So it's good to do this with sort of an overkill amount of memory, whether that's 32 gigabytes or whatever. Having said that, it's not foolproof, but it does give us a pretty good idea of how much system memory a game requires to avoid any slowdowns. Again, the choice of hardware will also impact the amount of system memory used. So having said all that, I'm first going to show you memory allocation and a few popular modern titles, of course, released this year. And all of this gameplay testing was conducted on our Core i9 1900K test system with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory and a GeForce GTX 2080 Ti graphics card. The test system has a number of applications running in the background, so it's not just some completely fresh install of Windows with absolutely nothing else running. We have things like Steam running, uh, Origin, Uplay, Battle.net, Epic Games Launcher. Uh, there's Discord on there running. Not that it's doing anything. I'm not chatting to anyone, but it's there open in a chat uh, session. We have Chrome with a few tabs open. There's 10 tabs in total. And then we have MSI Afterburner, Reva Tuner collecting some on-screen statistics for us, and then Fraps. I should also note that all testing has been conducted at 4K using the highest possible quality preset, again with an RTX 2080 Ti. So starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we see around 29% of our 32 gigabytes allocated. Throughout our testing, this RAM usage hovered between 9.5 to 9.3 gigabytes, with VRAM usage around 8.1 to 8.2 gigabytes. This suggests that a system with just 8 gigabytes of RAM could see performance issues in this game. Moving on, we have Battlefield 5 multiplayer using the 64 player mode. Here, RAM usage gets up to around 33%, hitting 10.8 gigabytes and basically never dropping below 10.4 gigabytes. VRAM allocation was also very high, holding steady at 9.7 gigabytes on the Narvik map. So again, we have another title that will likely run into stuttering issues with 8 gigabytes of memory. Next up, we have Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and this title is a serious memory pig, at least based on the small amount of testing that I've done with this title. RAM allocation held pretty steady at 12 gigabytes, while VRAM usage was also very high at 10.5 gigabytes, making this the most demanding title that we've tested yet. F1 2018 is a title that you'll probably get away just fine using 8 gigabytes of memory, as we saw system memory usage peak at 8.5 gigabytes. That's right on the edge for sure, but you'll probably get away with that. At the 4K resolution, VRAM usage was quite high at 7.5 gigabytes, but any GPU that can handle this extreme resolution will have at least 8 gigabytes of VRAM anyway. Next up we have Far Cry 5, and here we saw RAM usage hit 9.8 gigabytes, though VRAM usage was still reasonably low at 5.8 gigabytes. Still, at almost 10 gigabytes of system memory, you're starting to get a bit too far beyond what an 8 gigabyte RAM capacity will let you get away with. Hitman 2 pushed total system memory allocation just over 10 gigabytes for the entirety of our test, and we saw it peak at 10.3 gigabytes. VRAM usage was also similar to what we saw in Far Cry 5 at around 5.6 gigabytes. Just Cause 4 was very light on memory, though Avalanche's Apex game engine is seriously showing its age in 2018. Less than 7 gigabytes of RAM was allocated in total, and less than 5 gigabytes of VRAM was consumed. Monster Hunter World is a title that should work just fine with 8GB of RAM. Here we saw allocation peak at 8.3GB, and VRAM usage was also quite low at under 5GB. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was certainly one of the best looking games released this year, and while it uses a reasonable amount of system memory, it's certainly not extreme at around 9GB. VRAM usage though was quite high, consistently using just over 8GB. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a memory intensive title and here we were consistently seeing RAM allocation pushed above 10 gigabytes, generally to around 10 and a half gigabytes. VRAM usage was also quite high at around 8.3 gigabytes. Second last game we're gonna look at is Strange Brigade and this is a well optimized title that runs very well on a wide range of hardware. Therefore, it wasn't surprising to find that the memory requirements aren't that high. Just seven and a half gigabytes of RAM was allocated. Though at the 4K resolution, VRAM usage did still hit 6.5 gigabytes. Certainly nothing extreme there, but higher than some of the titles we've tested so far. Last up, we have Vermintide 2, and here system memory allocation hit 9 gigabytes, while VRAM usage was relatively low at 5.5 gigabytes. This is a title that you probably could play with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but you would be right on the edge. Okay, so now that we've had a look at memory allocation using high-end hardware and a dozen tiles released this year, 
Now let's take a closer look at the performance numbers when testing Battlefield 5, Hitman 2, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'll be doing this in two parts, firstly with high-end GPUs at 1440p and 4K, and then with mid-range GPUs at 1080p and 1440p. Please note for all this testing, I'm still using the Core i9-9900K test system. The only hardware changes other than the graphics cards is obviously the memory. For all the memory testing, I'm using Team Group's T-Force Dark. For the 8GB configuration, I have a kit with two 4GB sticks using CL15 timings, and then basically we've used the same type of memory, but with 8GB modules for a 16GB capacity. Then for the 32GB testing, I'm not going to go with just two sticks, I'm going to actually use a four of the 8GB modules, so two 16GB kits giving us a 32GB capacity. Team Group does offer a 32GB kit with just two 16GB modules, but they use looser timing, so I opted for using the 8GB uh, sticks instead, so that way we have the same timings across all test configurations. Okay, so first up, we once again have the RTX 2080 Ti, but this time on hand for testing, we also have Vega 64 Liquid and the GTX 1070. Starting with Battlefield 5 at 1440p, we see virtually no difference in performance between the 16 and 32 gigabyte configurations, and given what we just saw when looking at the on-screen statistics, this shouldn't surprise anyone. However, as we reduce the system memory capacity to 8 gigabytes, we start to see a reduction in performance, at least when looking at the frame time performance, that is. The average frame rate saw at most a 2 FPS change, but if we look at the 1% low, and in particular the 0.1% low results, we see that the frame rates have become less consistent. For the RTX 2080 Ti, we see up to a 7% drop in frame time performance, 8% for Vega 64, and 7% for the GTX 1070. Moving to the 4K resolution, and here the RTX 2080 Ti's frame time result suffers by 5%. But more interestingly than that is the noticeable reduction in performance when going from 32GB to 16GB, which was very unexpected. Furthermore, the 0.1% low result is reduced by 10% when going from 32GB down to 8GB. However, for the much more heavily GPU bound configurations using Vega 64 and the GTX 1070, we see that the memory capacities had little impact on performance at the 4K resolution. The Hitman 2 results are interesting for a few reasons. Firstly, the RTX 2080 Ti consistently saw a performance reduction as we lowered the amount of available system memory, and it wasn't just frame time performance that suffered. We saw previously that this game was quite memory hungry, but 16GB of RAM really should be more than enough to cover it, so it's interesting to see 32GB offering a 4-5% performance boost. That said, the performance gain with the 32GB configuration wasn't seen when using either Vega 64 or the GTX 1070. In fact, Vega 64 delivered the same performance across the board, whether the system had 8 or 32GB of memory. But with the GTX 1070, while we do see the same performance with 16 and 32GB of RAM, the frame time performance starts to really suffer with just 8GB. Here we see an 11% drop in the 0.1% low performance. Moving to the 4K resolution, and here we again see better performance for the RTX 2080 Ti when paired with 32GB of system memory. This time frame time performance was boosted by as much as 7%. Again, Vega 64 saw no change in performance, even with 8GB of RAM, and then the GTX 1070 was much the same, though again we did see a small drop off with just 8GB of RAM. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has some very interesting results for us. For this title, the RTX 2080 Ti delivered the same results, whether it was using either 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, was all much the same. However, with just 8 gigabytes, the performance hit was massive, though you wouldn't know it if you just focused on the average frame rate. The hit to frame time performance, though, was substantial, and at times the stuttering in-game was very noticeable. Here we saw up to a 32% drop for the 0.1% low result. That said, once again, the performance hit for Vega 64 isn't that extreme. At most, we saw an 11% reduction in performance, while the hit for the GTX 1070 was much more severe at 23%. Then moving to 4K, we see that the RTX 2080 Ti doesn't suffer nearly as badly with just 8GB of memory, though we do see a reasonable drop off for Vega 64 in the GTX 1070. We're looking at frame time performance, so a bit of a reversal there. Okay, so previously we found that it's the lower end graphics cards featuring less VRAM that suffer the most when running with limited system memory. So I went back and retested all over again with the Radeon RX 580 8GB, RX 570 4GB, and GTX 1060 3GB at 1080p and 1440p. So let's see what kind of impact the various RAM capacities had on these configurations. 
First up we have Battlefield 5, and as expected, little to no difference between 16 and 32 gigabytes. However, with just 8 gigabytes, we see a noticeable performance hit to the RX 570 and GTX 1060. So much so that even the average frame rates dipped. We saw this in last year's test, that is the 3 GB GTX 1060 really struggling with frame time performance and modern tiles when using less than 16 GB of system memory. Naturally, the situation isn't improved at 1440p, though it's really interesting just how much the RX 570 suffers with just 8 GB of RAM in this title. The hit for the 3 GB GTX 1060 is pretty significant as well, but damn does that Radeon GPU get hit really hard. Basically, you don't want to be playing Battlefield 5 multiplayer with just 8 GB of RAM, especially if you have a lower end GPU with 4 GB or less VRAM. That said, for titles such as Hitman 2, the performance hit is basically non-existent. We're not seeing much outside of the margin of error here. The margins do open up a little bit at 1440p for the 3 GB GTX 1060 when paired with just 8 GB of RAM, but overall nothing too extreme. As seen previously with high-end GPUs, Shadow of the Tomb Raider does run into a few issues with just 8GB of RAM, and we're certainly seeing that here with these three mid-range graphics cards. The hit to frame time performance, in particular the 0.1% lows, was quite extreme for all three configurations. Naturally, this was also seen at 1440p, and here the 3GB GTX 1060 really tanked, with frequent and very noticeable frame stuttering being a big problem. The 1440p resolution also proved to be a bit much for the RX 570. Okay, so at this point I've probably hit even the most dedicated Harbour Unbox viewers with enough benchmark numbers. Time to start wrapping this one up. Uh, it seems pretty clear at this point, if you want to play the latest and greatest, uh, the most demanding titles, you'll want 16 gigabytes of RAM. I found this time last year that eight gigabytes really was the bare minimum, and now that's truer than ever. Of course, if you play less demanding titles such as Fortnite, Overwatch and Rocket League, for example, or old but still very popular titles such as Dota 2 and CSGO, then 8GB of system memory will be plenty. But if you want to get amongst it in Battlefield 5 or enjoy the breathtaking visual scene in Shadow of the Tomb Raider without the constant reminder that your system isn't quite up to par, then I'd recommend getting at least 16GB. That said, for mid-range to lower-end rigs where minor stuttering can at times be caused by a lack of VRAM, a slow storage device, not quite enough CPU cores, and so on, being on the edge for memory capacity probably isn't going to make that much difference. For example, a Core i3-8350K system with a basic TLC SSD, a graphics card with 2-3 gigabytes of VRAM, you're going to see some stuttering in titles such as Battlefield 5. So while upgrading from 8GB to 16GB of RAM will certainly help, it's not going to completely solve the stuttering issues. Alternatively, those rocking high-end hardware, you know, something like an RTX 2080 Ti, all this talk about memory capacity is kind of redundant anyway. Just get 32GB and forget about it. After all, if you're spending at least $1300 US on a graphics card, are you honestly going to think twice about spending three to four hundred dollars US on DDR4 memory? Probably not. For most of you, 16 gigabytes is going to be the sweet spot and this is what I recommend. So in a nutshell, for today's latest games, eight gigabytes really does seem to be out now. 16 gigabytes is the sweet spot, as I said, and 32 gigabytes is still overkill. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the testing, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the way we do at Harbourbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time. Unless I lose all my memory and forget how to do this.